Okay, good evening everybody. So uh, I think we're ready to start our uh, work session tonight. So let's go. Do we have minutes? No. Uh, okay. We were working on the minutes tonight. That's fine. We'll just do those next meeting. So let's go to the uh, table items. <coughs> Number one, I'm going to move to have this adjourned again. The planning board has it finished its review. I don't think we can act till they act. So. Second. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, second table item. That one's mine. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to make a motion that we table it. Can, I, can I jump for some before you do that? Sure. Um, I got some information today that might, might help you. Um, okay. The planning board is going to make its determination next week, next mm -hmm. Thursday. Right. Um, they have sent a memo to you. I see it. Yeah. Um, stating that um, they have no, really no, I have no problem with you going ahead and making a decision if you'd like to. Okay, I, I think it's I'd like to, to wait until they, yeah, it's they okay. make their decision. Yep, thank fine. you for that information. Right, I appreciate good. it, John. All right. So I'd like to make a motion to table it since uh, the, the uh, planning board is going to meet next week. Oh, so. All right, any further discussion on the motion to table? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Okay, number three. Um, this was adjourned to get, <clears throat> give them an opportunity to consider reducing the, the amount of signage. Uh, we just have a memo here from uh, from Jim saying that uh, they have done, they have reduced it, each sign to 133 square feet, which totals 266 of square feet, uh, eight square feet under the 274. They're allowed giving the linear footage of the, the front of their uh, space. <coughs> So on that basis, I'm going to move to approve this. I think uh, they've demonstrated the need, same idea that we gave Burlington, which is next door to them. Um, and uh, on that basis, I'm going to move to approve this at, <coughs> at the 133 square feet for each, each sign. I'll second. Sorry. Yeah. Go ahead, man. Yeah. Okay, any further discussion on that? I think so. Make sure we make a note that the square footage did increase because at the last meeting we were half the size we were and they mis mismeasured or whatever we had so we have doubled that now. Yeah, we're almost about the good, point. good point. Yeah, and also I thought the uh, the original sign we had looked like it was white, black letters on white. And this one <coughs> now looks like they're going to put uh, uh, white letters on the dark background that's already there. It looks like to me, which I think looks a lot better. Do you know, Jim, did, did they deal with Seeker already on this one? Uh, uh, I it's think probably an unlisted action. I think we made an unlisted action. That's correct. And uh, they already it's issued an exec or do you know? Well, yes, it stayed dead. Should sure. we re it? Just again. Again. I, would, I don't did, know. but I, I will take the minutes from the last meeting and incorporate them into this okay. our final resolution. Okay. All right. All right. So we have a motion to approve in a couple of seconds. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you thank for working with staff. Appreciate it, folks. Absolutely. Yep. Have a great night. Check. You too. Bye. Thank you. Okay, so we're ready to go to tonight's agenda to see if we need anything clarified. Uh, number one. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. We need some clarification. Okay. Um, I wasn't real clear. It, well, I went out there. I talked to. Uh, to um, Mrs. Mistrella, who basically said she didn't, under no circumstance, would she want a six foot fence there. She really wanted a four because that's what matches what they have along the back and the, uh, the east side of the property. Um, so she wanted to stay with that. But the, the she still wasn't real clear where on the property they were going to put the fence. Okay. It looks like it's maybe inside the tree, maybe outside that little tree. Are you talking about the west side? along the west side, or is it on the west side? Yeah. All right. So that's really the issue, is it on the west side? That's right. Well, <coughs> on the on the south side too, and I'll explain the situation. Mm. If you want to put a fence along your property line, and we all know the property line is not where the road is, right? But our roadway systems are 60 feet. Our our right of way is 60 feet wide, and in that right of way, the center you, line. The center line you have, if you were to take a center line, the road itself is 22 feet wide. So 11 feet in from the center line. Then it's one and a half feet of gutter. And then it's 17 and a half feet of grass area beyond that. Okay. At that 17 and a half foot mark, that is where you can put a fence. And the fence can be three feet in height. <clears throat> if you want to go any higher than that, you have to come to the Zoning Board of Appeals for a, a variance. 
In addition to that, if you were to look at that that line, that 17 and a half foot line running parallel to the road, right. when you get to, well, we'll get to that in a second too, because that is an issue. But when you get to that southerly property line where the neighbors are next to them, mm -hmm. yeah. that fence also has to go in 20 feet at three feet in height. Right. And without a variance, that's how you do it, okay? So you can <laughs> put a fence along your property line, but, but it's got to be three feet in height. And obviously the rationale for that is to allow for people to get in and out of their driveway safely without having to worry about looking down the street and missing the road. 20 feet in on the back, though, is because of the location of the back line? It's because you're still, you still want you to have some type of visual visual view of, you know, when you're coming out of your driveway, they want you to have a view it's of the perpendicular. I'm not sure it's if you guys were on the same page right. with that question. It's no, perpendicular no, to the... So let me show you here. Here's, here's the property line. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This property line is now 17 and a half feet in from the, from right. the gutter. Mm -hmm. I see it there. Yeah. Okay, so they can go along that property line three feet. They only want to go to here, but theoretically they can go three feet all the way around. <clears throat> a good example is, I don't know which one of you had 1947 Jackson Road. Where the variance request for the no, patio, I do. I but there's a little fence all the mm -hmm. way around the perimeter yes. of that property, which is in compliance because it's at three feet. So when you get to the back property line here, going back into the property, a distance of 20 feet in, you're still supposed to have a three foot high fence. Where's the 20 foot in though? Because hang on. Is it from the concrete. Part? I don't see no, anything no. that talks about uh, the setbacks don't apply because the fences are clearly not structures. So why can't you put that right on the property line? The you can put a fence on the property Three line, foot. but from the from the point of the right of way back 20 feet, it has to be three feet oh, without a saying. variance. Okay. But you so would do that. But, but you can still do it. Still be consistent with what you would put along the McKenna too. Yes. Right. Yeah. So what happens is, depth say you that. wanted a six foot high fence along the neighbor's property right. itself, it could be six foot high. But when you get to that 20 foot mark before the right of way, it now has to drop down to three feet and then get to the right of way and come around. Gotcha. That makes sense. So, and in your case, your question, which you met, brought up a minute ago, in this case, if we found out that there is actually a 20-foot drainage easement over the boundary line of that property, 10 on the applicant side and 10 on the neighbor's side. <clears throat> I mean, years ago, the neighbors wanted to put something in the easement, I don't know what it was, landscaping or something, and we told them they couldn't do it. So they pulled out a map showing that they actually did indeed have a drainage easement on that property. The original map that they gave us as part of the application did not show that for some reason. It was an old map that we had picked up from the prior owner. But their new map, which she just sent me, does show the fact there is a 10-foot easement on their property. And she is, you know, she's obviously willing to move that fence 10 feet okay. to mm -hmm. the north. Because it's now on the property. Line. Right. So, so Kaz, um, perhaps to further illustrate both of these issues, and, and, and <clears throat> just give me a ballpark. Um, what is the distance between the um, where she could put a three-foot fence on the south side and the west side <coughs> and the fence around the pool? And the reason I'm asking, I'm trying to get a sense of how much yard there is going to be right. between those two fences. So, again, we talked about the road being out here. Yep. 17 and a half feet in. She can put a fence up three feet in height. Okay. All the way around if she wants. Right. All right, when she gets to a point over here where the fence is already in, so it's a moot point, but if she were to come back 20 feet off of uh, Springside Lane, she okay. could go three feet and then six feet up. Okay. Back here, she can go six feet all the way across outside the easement area until she gets that 20 foot mark, and then she has to drop down to three feet okay. and tie back into this. Now, she did put a fence up along here. Mm -hmm. At four feet, I, did she continue on yet, or is it still? No, no. it's just there. Yeah, I'd asked her to hold off until we figured yep. all this out, so that's good. So I don't know if you could tell from that surveyor in that ballpark how much, how many feet between where her three-foot fence could go on the southerly line and that pool fence. I, I, the, the, again, the reason is this I'm asking is fence because, this fence? yeah, about because it, it's really there's a to me there's a huge difference between putting a fence around the edge of the grass, which we know can't happen, right, right. and where it can happen. I mean, that's, that there's right. the, a lot of the grass will not be, will be on the outside of the Isn't fence. the pool you, fence within the property, within the house dimensions? It's not. Well, outside. the pool fence shows right here. Well, it's like the house. Right. So it's probably about 50 feet, because oh, it's 106, it's, so, it's 106 right. from those. So, Suddenly part of the yeah, house. Maybe this yeah. is what you're asking. In relation to that little tree on the McKenna side, 
Where is the where would the fence go in relation to that? Inside um, it, outside it? Probably. Not. I'm not quite sure, but if you saw they had it staked out actually. Yeah. The, the, I was gonna say the, that's the flag utilities. Where it is. Yeah, they, they identified the utilities. I mean, don't go all the way out. That's no, where the utility flags are, right? Those are utilities. Yeah. That's not where the fence would go. The fence is gonna be probably right inside those utility flags. So right. it's on the outside. Two colors, of right. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Because actually she called me so, and I left go. my card. All right, so yeah. and the fence is gonna come from the here as well. Back and around and then back over here and then tie into the side of the house. Right. And it's about the same on the other, yeah, right. It's right, right in the back, yeah. Pointing to is where right. it's going to stop. And it's going to stop right at this point, which is about 17 and a half Okay, feet so this highlighter right. mark that they gave us in the site map is not correct that this is existing concrete going out the side that they have it marked. No, that's not that, Okay, that's why, that's why I'm confused. And you can even see this is the 60 foot wide right away right. here and there's still 17 feet beyond that point. Okay, that made more sense yeah. then because it looked like I saw existing yeah, concrete. Yeah, it was not, it's, yeah, that, that, map, that's what was, that map is not correct. Okay. Okay, so I can see the confusion on that. Okay. But okay. Thank you, Christine, because this really does show the whole deal. Yeah, that's a lot better. It's coming here. Going along here, which is asking for relief from this, really from this point here. Okay, yeah. What actually, happens? 20 feet in from this point. This is the pool. This point, it's then 20 stay like here, here comes here, and then it ties back here to the house, right? To the house, okay. And they have it already over here. You right. can see where that right. fence is, and here. Yeah, they're going to move this in. Yeah, yes, well, that's right. I saw that. Look at this. Well, existing con I assume that's, that was concrete. Uh, that but yeah, it doesn't I, well, that is their property. It says concrete so walk. But here. And this is yeah, where he talked about concrete. because it is driveway. You need but I assume this was. Right. Yeah. Yeah. This is a road. This is the road. The road's in here somewhere. Right. at three. So they can see. But this is the road. So this 42 feet. Is that right? That's probably right. Yeah. That's probably about 50. Yeah. And that's, I know, I didn't. I was okay. confused too. No, so there's a road behind that. So this could actually, well. Got your question answered? I think so, yeah. Any, anything else for clarification on this one? No. Okay, how about number two? Uh, <coughs> that's me. Right? Is that the one off of Barrett? Clarion? Yeah. yeah. So so one still golf think course. Is, yeah. Um, yeah, that was the only question I had is why is this considered a corner lot, but I think Jim answered that by the town still has a right-of-way, a transportation right-of-way next to it, even though there's another parcel next to that between right. that and Baird Road. So it's an odd situation because you have the, the um, homeowner's property, former Baird Road, <coughs> then you have a parcel, and then you have the new Baird Road. Yeah. And that's why I questioned the fact why is it even considered a corner lot in this right. situation. So it's a potential corner lot? No, it is a corner lot. We have the By right definition. Of, we have the right of way. Uh, and and if, if you're doing anything, you're probably doing it for somebody, if they're going to sell a house, the next buyer's attorney's going to want to know why they're not in compliance and you've got something to show them with their own car. Because the yeah. neighbor's driveway behind them yeah. enters through that easement that the town owns. Exactly. Yep. Okay, anything else on two? How about three? It's kind of the same thing. Uh, yep. They're on a corner lot. They, they, they're supposed to meet a, a, an excessive setback, which they can't meet. And I asked them to Okay. Four. Yeah. Uh, get a corner lot and has yeah. to hold the fence on it. It faces oh, inward yeah. towards uh, the west. Yeah. yeah, it's moving towards the west, and there's hardly any backyard. In these decks, too, you know, it's, it's hard to believe even the decks and the patios. People don't even see them. Yeah, I mean, yeah. grass goes taller. Yeah, taller most of them. So, I mean, I'm just making a count. Five? Anything on five? How long has that penny up in there? It's been there a long time. Okay. That's, yeah. that's what it seemed like. Yeah. <clears throat> so that a court, was that a code enforcement catch? Yeah, I think okay. so. Yeah, it was when the pool was inspected. I think. Okay. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And then six. Same. Six, uh, this is the property with Derivet out on uh, Kennedy Road. They have uh, two properties abutting each other. Right. On the mm -hmm. one property, there's a bar that uh, meets a 100 foot setback, but they want to put a lean to on the east side of it, which will now bring it down to 90 feet. They're willing to um, tear the thing off if they ever sell the property or do any kind of restriction that you're asking for. Um, they look to actually combine the two properties, it was going to cost $900 to do it, and they thought. At this point in time, we don't want to spend nine hundred dollars, but we will act on any recommendations that you have. I don't know why they accommodate. tear it down. I mean, it would be part of this. Whoever bought it would want horses, and they probably wanted the same thing. They'd be in here, you know. Yes, yeah. but still a good restriction to put on there for like an awning. Future stuff. They, they need it for like wind protection. Yeah. 
Okay. That's it. Anything else? All right, let's take a uh, 12 and a half minute break and then start the uh, public hearings. Thanks. Okay. Penfield Zoning Board of Appeals. Tonight's meeting is going to take place in two parts. The first part will be our public hearings. We will ask the applicant to come up to that podium there, uh, give us name and address, and then explain to the board why the relief being requested should be granted. Uh, once the applicant is done with the presentation, board members will likely have some questions, and then we'll invite anyone in the audience that cares to speak about the application to come up and do the same thing. Give us name and address, and then talk about the application. Uh, after the public hearings are adjourned, we're going to take a brief recess and then we'll reconvene in the back of the room to uh, deliberate on the applications. Members of the public are welcome at both sessions, the public hearings and the deliberations, although deliberations uh, are times reserved generally for conversations amongst board members, board members with staff, sometimes with our council. Uh, you're certainly welcome to stay, as is any member of the public. Uh, as I've already said at either session, but if you uh, have something better to do, you want to go home, you can call tomorrow and uh, find out what action, if any, the board took on a particular item. Uh, we um, always like to say every month that we think the town does a very good job of notifying neighbors that live in the area of applications, and frankly, all town citizens for that matter, that the applications are going to be heard. The town does it by sending out postcards, requiring applicants to put up the sign, advertise it on TV, and then put posting the agenda online and here on the bulletin board as well. And the town does that so that neighbors and town folk, concerned citizens, are more fully uh, and aware and informed of their right to come in and speak about applications, which we think is good. We invite everyone, uh, and it makes, generally speaking, it makes our job easier. Um, so uh, that being said, I'd ask everyone to rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Great. Thank you. And may we have the first application, please. You may. Item number one, Abby Mistrella, 15 Springside Lane, Penfield, New York, 14526, requests an area variance from Chapter 257-1D of the code to allow a higher fence than permitted at 15 Springside Lane. The property is owned by Jeremy, I'm sorry, the property was owned by Jeremy and Lori Rocco and is zoned R120. SBL number 109.04-6-47, application number 17Z-0063. Thank you. And, I, and I'm sorry, I'm going to interrupt you before you even really start. But I would just like ask, to ask Jim if you could just, I want to clarify something we talked about in our work session. There's confusion sometimes with where is a property line on any of our properties because I understand the code and has, there's a certain distance from the property line. And many people think that that is all the way to the street but that is not the case. That's correct. The, the right of way is 60 feet wide, so if you were to take half of the street, that would be 11 feet of macadam surface, and then there's a foot and a half of gutter area, and then there's 17 and a half feet beyond that of grass area. That is where the property line is. Um, and I know Abby's been in with the neighbors also. We've identified where that's located, but it is 17 and a half feet in from the back side of the gutter. Is to okay, where the property so, is so we're not talking about a line that is where the grass meets the gutter, no, as you've put it. All. We're talking about something some 17 feet. 17 and one half sorry. feet. Okay, I'm sorry. No, cool. that's okay. Go ahead. <clears throat> Good evening. I'm here with my husband, Anthony, and we're probably the newest residents of Penfield. We moved about two weeks ago. Um, so we have been crazy, I guess, taking care of the house, carpet, paint, all of that fun stuff. So what we are looking to do is because right now um, we discovered, and Jim, thank you for calling it out, there's a drainage pipe in the backyard um, that we share with our neighbors. So there's already a 10-foot easement. So we're going to be building 10 feet away from our back property line, losing about 100, 1,400 square feet. So the hope is that we can build on our property line at least maybe one foot in our four-foot fence and continue it. I know the ruling is currently three foot, 
um, but we're looking to ask for the four feet. We're building a white vinyl semi-private fence, um, obviously for the safety of our dog and our child. We just moved from Henrietta, <clears throat> and we had a six-foot privacy fence, but moving to a new, more open neighborhood, we wanted to be more collaborative, have a lower fence, semi-private, and have it be more open. Okay, and what you have now along the east side and the uh, north side is, is the same fence that you, same type of fence that you would put? Yeah, so we started to build um, because our contractor said he wanted to get the fence in before winter time. And before my I pop in January and have an infant, I would like to be able to let our dog outside. So we will be building our fence. We're just trying to maximize the space in our backyard. We're hoping on that right side is where we put the place up for our son. Um, <coughs> because where the pool is centered, it's kind of tough. I have some illustrations if you want to see our yard, or yeah. I can hand those out at the end or sure. the beginning. It's up to. Why don't you hand them out now? Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. I can save a copy for myself, but I'm sure you're going to it up. Well, you know what? Why don't you borrow this copy and then yeah. I'll, I'll share it with you. Yeah. Thanks. And I apologize if most of the pictures were taken either early in the morning or when I got home from work. Thank you. Thank you. Somebody caught me on a day when I was home with my sick son. I did. So <laughs> I should have taken some pictures there. So the first picture on the top indicates what we already have built along uh, the left side of our home. And that's what you'll see is the four foot semi-private white vinyl fence. And it's our understanding that's going to be moved? No. Not no. this side. No. Well, no. The, it will be moved forward. back, the backyard. So we're gonna come 10 feet in because Jim didn't make us aware of that. It wasn't actually on our original property map when we were working through this. So that's along the back line that's gonna go 10 in. Yep, 10 in. South. So, and it's, and it's 140 feet across, so that's 1,400 feet, square feet, we're gonna be losing out of our back space okay. as it is. Thank you. And to keep the consistency of the height, a three foot fence, I love my dog, but she's just, She's a little chunky, but she could probably even <laughs> jump over three feet, so that, to me, is not what's gonna keep my son and my child, or, and my dog safe. The next picture down, that just shows the intersection going into Springside Lane and McKenna Trail. So you can see it's pretty, it's pretty visible, it's pretty flat. Mm -hmm. The last picture <coughs> down, that shows the other viewpoint, so standing on McKenna Trail looking towards, so you can see that it doesn't, appear right now that there would be any obstruction or view of oncoming traffic. On the second page, the way that the backyard is set up is a little unique. I'm standing from a point where I took this picture of where our patio area would be, so where I'd be sitting down, and it's evident that I wouldn't have visibility if my son was playing near the side street. So my job is to protect my child, and I wish he would listen to me every time I said something, but I'm not there yet. I'm not sure if any parent is, but... Wouldn't um, be a normal child. Right? No. <laughs> I'm looking for one. I also went around the neighborhood. There's 17 fences in Newberry Park that complete the full backyard, not just around the pool. There's a variety, some are four feet, some are six feet, some are semi-private, some are private. Um, these are just a couple. There's actually another corner lot that's on Finchwood. I think it, it might butt up to Milford. And they have kind of the same lot we do at the corner, so they have their whole fencing around the corner as well. The next page in the packet, these are all the highlighted homes that have full fenced in backyards. There's 17 of them. And the following page documents the specific numbers of the street. Okay. I try to be. I try not to drive around the neighborhood too many times slowly. I didn't want <laughs> people to question me. <clears throat> and then the last page, that's the property map, the updated one we got at closing, which does show the easement line. Yeah. So I did highlight in blue what our property line is, and then I drew in red where we're planning to build. Do you know approximately in relation to the one tree on the McKenna side, 
where that fence is going to run? Is it going to be? I know I asked you that at the yeah. time, but and I don't, I don't really know, and I don't really care about the tree, so I'm willing to chop that thing down. <clears throat> okay. I'm not married to any landscaping that we have. There's a lot that's coming down tomorrow, and maybe that's one of them. I don't really know. We just picked out a bunch. Okay. So what well, we just heard, but it's, the fence would be approximately 17 and a half feet from where the gutter is. From McKenna? Yes. And our builder typically builds about a foot in, <clears throat> for, you know, just to be safe on the safe side. Yeah. Just aside, you don't want to go much beyond that. Otherwise, you're going to have a title issue. So. Right. Oh, no, it's no, no. It's going to need to yes. be addressed. So. <laughs> you want to keep everything within legal bounds. Okay. Um, all right. And I have looked. Yeah, I did see the, the one on Finchwood, which seems similar to what you want to do. Right. Okay. And if it weren't for the, the side street, I, I might put a little bit more trust that, well, actually not my dog, but my child, you know, obviously not running into, but this is something that I do have control over. My, one of my good friends, she just unfortunately had a very bad tragic accident with her son last year. And accidents happen, and you can't prevent them, but if there's something that's in my control, I'm going to do everything I can to do it. And you came up with four feet because you think that's what you need to contain your dog? Well, four feet, we did have a six foot private fence and the cost actually for four feet semi-private is the same, even though you think it's less material. Um, we, we just wanted, we, when we drove around the neighborhood before we bought the home, we saw that it was more of an open area. Um, we saw that not many people had the, the tall private fences like we had and we were looking forward to having an area and a neighborhood that our son can play and have friends over and they can see what we're doing and we can see what they're doing and we can run over and play and we wanted that kind of atmosphere and environment. But I think you already answered this. The question is you, you're allowed to put a three foot fence without a variance. You right. want a, a four foot fence. Right. The difference being why four feet instead of three? Because that in my mind is safer so dogs couldn't jump in our yard. My dog can't jump out. Okay. I think my child would probably have a field day trying to climb a three foot fence, four foot is out of the question. At this, at least at this height. <laughs> at that point, he should know not to jump into a street. All right. That's all I have. <laughs> uh, did you already purchase? If this were to be granted, did you already purchase the fence that would go around the rest of the yard? We purchased materials, and you might have to correct me, but he is aware of that. We're either that we're. He's actually waiting until the result of this meeting to figure out how many, how much more material we will need for the rest. Okay, so that which you purchased, is it four feet in height? It's, yep, everything's four feet that we've purchased thus far. It, can you return it? Yes. Okay. Um, all right. And what I, I'm trying to figure out here with these maps, um, and this is helpful, by the way, this is very helpful. How, how much uh, space you're going, you're going to have um, and, your, and your children will have to play in the yard given that you're going to have the fence and then you have the gate and the fence around the pool. We're actually going to have, I, I know, the gate will most likely be on the opposite side of McKenna because that's where our patio is and that's where people would probably walk in if we had events in the back. Yeah. Um, but that's right, we're, we're trying to build close to or at least one foot in of the property line to mm -hmm. expand the amount of room that we would actually have. We've okay. already kind of said, oh, we would love to put a swing set right here, but if we had to move 20 feet in, because our fence is one foot higher than the three feet, it probably wouldn't allow for that. So the goal is to maximize the amount of space we can have in our Sure. Back. And um, I guess I could just do the math, but if you were to take the McKenna, the west side, which is on McKenna, and where you've drawn an orange, I'll call it. Okay. And and move that in 20 feet. It's not much room left. Well, that's what I'm asking. Yeah, it's we, we measured it. it. It's it's not much room at all. So well, that, but you have room on the other side of the pool, right? And then you have room between the pool and the easement. Even though you lost your 10 feet times 140. I, I mean, I know, yep. when you say you want to maximize it, I get it. Yep. Uh, the point that I'm trying to make is that even if you were to move the four-foot fence in 20 mm -hmm. feet, there's still 
you still have yard. Well, the problem is, is there's a bunch of trees right now that take up all of that. Mm -hmm. um, so there really wouldn't be much space on that side of the yard. Okay. And I, I'll, believe me, I understand because <laughs> I, well, I know, you know, you probably know your friend. You work at Paycheck, so I know what you're talking about, about the tragedy last year. Right. So I totally get where you're coming from there. Mm -hmm. Because, um, but your children are going to someday be the point where they know not to hop the fence. And yet the fence right. will still be there. Right. My right? dog? Yeah, right. Right. Okay. So what I'm, <clears throat> what I'm wondering is, and obviously we're, get, we're, we're not done with the application we're going to hear, but what I'm wondering is um, knowing that you want to maximize your space, oh, yeah. Absolutely. how much, if, if any, are you willing to move, let's say, inward from, from and you don't, right. if, if it's one foot, which is where you are now, then it's one foot. Right. But just, just hold that thought for now and I'll okay. let other folks ask questions. I don't want to monopolize anything. Perfect. Just a clarification, Jim. Um, 17 and a half is where we are. She would need to go to how far in to be, to have a four foot fence. Is that 20? Without coming to the board? Correct. Would be 27 and a half. 27 and a half, okay. Oh, 10 foot more. So basically 10 foot more. Okay. I'm sorry. I, no, I take that back. 20 feet more. 20 yeah. feet. 20, from, yeah. 20, yeah. 20, yeah. From, okay, so it's 20 feet more. The line. If we're looking at this map, it's approximately half the distance. To the, to the pool. That's yeah. right. Between Correct. the house and, and, you know. Yeah. And that's so the other is, reason we wanted a four foot two. We thought we might, yeah. it would be a better justification to maximize our yard rather than going with a six foot fence. So we didn't even consider six feet. According, I'm sorry, Daniel, okay? Oh, yeah. Okay, according to this map you gave me, you're actually <laughs> losing 10 foot in the back of your property because of the easement, correct? Mm -hmm. Right. So you really wanted 10 foot more, right. but because of the easement, you're losing 10 right. feet in the back of your And that was a game changer last week. That was mean, Jim. That was, that was thank you, Jim, because we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. So you build it in the right spot. Right, yeah, right. We right. Get it. Well, we, don't, we definitely don't want to mess with any of that. Okay. That in there either. So that was a that was a kind of another little bit knock. So that just kind of puts more of a justification as to why we're losing already some in the back. It's quite a bit in the back already, and we're hoping the one foot more than the three is justifiable. And I guess my last question would be, if we don't grant the four, you're going to build the three anyway, right? No, we won't do three. Oh, we'll no? figure out where to build four. Okay. I've walked near. A th I'm. I'm shorter, and I've walked near a three-foot fence, and I think like, that's not going to do anything for, that's not going to keep anything out of our yard. Um, so in, in my opinion, a three-foot wouldn't be worth it for us. Okay. Anybody else from the board? Nope. All right, anyone in the audience? <coughs> Come on up. Good evening. Uh, my name is Jason Stoller. Uh, I live at 8 McKenna Trail. Uh, I, uh, my, my wife and I, we own the property uh, directly uh, behind uh, the Mistrellas. Um, so we're the first house on, on McKenna. So that's south? South of, south of the property, yes. Okay. Um, we uh, you thank everyone for recognizing the easement that's there uh, to help preserve, uh, that really does help preserve the, the natural landscape uh, that's, that's already been installed. Uh, so our, our really our only concern at this point is the line of sight. Um, there are a lot of, uh, there's a handful of teenage drivers right now in the neighborhood uh, and a handful more that are going to be coming of age in the next two or three years. Uh, we certainly struggle as it is with the snow banks, watching cars come down and it really only affects our driveway uh, as we're backing out uh, and you know, kids whizzing down and my son included, uh, I, I do have actually two teenage drivers. Uh, so we would, uh, having a four foot fence uh, along the McKenna Trail line, uh, we do think will, will affect our line of sight as we're backing out of our driveway. Um, and then certainly, you know, protecting uh, you know, cars that are, are coming down. Um, although, you know, we, we recognize that uh, the three foot fence is, is the standard, um, I, we think if, if the fence line was moved back uh, a couple feet, uh, that would certainly uh, improve the line of sight uh, and make it just a little bit safer uh, down the street. You do realize you have 20 feet before you, between when the fence ends and you get to the end of the driveway mm -hmm. and to the road. I do. 
And you think 22 would make a, a significant difference? I think it would make a difference. I don't think it would make a significant difference, but I do think it would make a difference. Okay, thank you. Um, are you done, Mike? I don't want yes, to. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, you said your your only concern is line of sight. It, it, uh, prior to uh, prior to uh, this meeting, our our other concern the was, was the easement and the okay. and the natural landscape that's already been installed. Uh, the way the fence looks, any issue with that or? Uh, that's my opinion. You know, I, yeah. Well, I, 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 I do have an opinion, uh, but I don't think it's. You're in, I'm asking you. I, I don't like it. Um, okay. I, it doesn't. It doesn't really flow in the in the neighborhood. Uh, we have a a very nice, wide open, uh, inviting uh, neighborhood. All the backyards. But that would be true of any fence. Yes. Okay. It would be true of any fence. Yeah. yeah. I'm just I wondering if there's anything specific about oh, this no, fence. It, 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 it's a it's a very nice, you know, white vinyl fence. Yeah. Um, does it doesn't fit? And you know, it, that's certainly my that's my opinion um, not okay. re not relevant to you know what uh, what town code says and, and what someone else can do on their property well no your your opinion is relevant yeah. you're a neighbor and uh, that's why you're invited here mm -hmm. uh, as, as, as I said earlier that's why everybody's invited here um, are you familiar with any of the other sites um, that the applicant Gave us here in the surrounding area that have fences. Have you seen any of those? Uh, I, a few of them. Um, I know uh, uh, there are a handful of fences in the neighborhood that are strictly in backyards. Mm -hmm. um, I know of the one on Finchwood that that happens to be a corner lot. It does, again, you know, my opinion, you know, kind of stick out a little bit. It doesn't doesn't flow in the neighborhood. Uh, but that's the only corner lot uh, fence that, that I'm aware of in the neighborhood. Okay. I do know of others that are just you know standard backyard fences. All right. Okay. Go ahead, Marie. I just want to be sure. Is I don't remember. Was the 71 Finchwood Lane in compliant? Was there a variance for that, or is it at 20 feet? Is I'm not, it? I'm not aware. I'm not aware. It's also a, 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 on an incline too, right? I mean, that sticks up yes. quite a bit. Yeah. yeah. Um. Well, Mike asked you the question about two feet. Uh, so in in reality, forget about the property lines and the right of way and all that stuff. But 20 feet from the end of the driveway versus 22, or you said a few feet. I'm not sure what you meant by that. But in any event, um, other than your everyday common sense and experience, you have anything? Uh, and I'll, I'm I'm going to ask you the same question. Anything uh, from a, a surveyor or a professional engineer or anything that would say that the that the differences proposed here would have a significant effect on site distance? No. Okay. All right. Anybody else? No. Okay, anyone else in the audience care to speak about this? Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. So why don't you come on up because I gotta catch you on the microphone. Me? Oh. Yes. So same, my same question to you. He's expressed concern, fairly and rightfully so, about site distance. Um, do you have anything in the way of a uh, engineer study, traffic study, other than your own My life God, experience? No. no, okay, okay, that, it, that it's uh, not. And you heard Mike's question about a couple of more feet, um, you know, w whether or not that would make a difference. Okay. I've got one question. Yeah. Um, the neighbor mentioned going two, uh, two feet farther, you've already mentioned going one. If you went another foot farther, would it be a deal breaker, really? No, it's a deal. Okay. She what did said, you say there? I said She's, that's a deal. That would be a deal if she went two feet instead of the one like she was talking about. Wow. <coughs> Where, once know. again, I, I mean, we're looking at two feet versus 20. I'll, I'll take the two right. feet. It's not worth, <laughs> it's not worth me uh, losing any more sleep about well, it. Well, and everybody, what do they say about good fences make good neighbors, right? Right. So. I think so, oh, geez. Okay, anybody else in the audience? Very good, thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Item number two, William Hughes, 5 Clarion Woods Drive, Penfield, New York, 14526, request an area variance for <coughs> Chapter 255.1F1 of the code to allow a storage shed with less front setback on a corner lot than permitted at 5 Clarion Woods Drive. The property is owned by William and Marianne Hughes and is zoned R115. SPL number 139.11-1-53.1, application number 17Z-0060. Uh, evening, everyone. Um, did everyone get the packets I dropped off? Hopefully. 
I'm sorry. Which additional packets your original application? I dropped off seven bounded folders with pictures and everything in it. Applications. I, there was a. Oh, they're I, back. I, Mine's back on the table. Yeah. Oh, well, number two. It's number the extra things on each person's. Day. Yeah. I looked yeah. Okay. You did that today? No, I did it like a month and a half ago. <laughs> okay. Is they were bound with a uh, lot. Survey maps. I had everything oh, yeah, on there. Got, yeah, they got the They got the application here. Okay. Oh, okay. The whole. Yeah. yeah, no, we, yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, you, we like certainly have blue, your original yeah. submission. Blue yeah. folders. Yeah, I had mine. Yeah. Okay. You just don't have the folders. Up. I had pictures in it and everything. So. Yeah. We, Basically, yeah. all I'm asking for is, an, I, I've got a 61 foot uh, setback to my house from my uh, property line. Um, I put an application in to put in a shed for garden tools, uh, basically just garden tractors and snow blowers and things like that. Um, I had a guy come out and do a inspection and he signed a ticket for the inspection, said everything was good. I ordered the shed and then two days later got a phone call saying, nope, you have a 50 foot setback and I don't know why. Um, there, I have, I own the actual sign for the development. Uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with what it says. It's Clarion Woods off mm -hmm. Baird Road. Right. Yeah. There's only one house in there. There's three lots left. There's only four in the development. So this was the model home. Right. So I own the sign and all of the landscaping for the sign. The shed would be behind that. Um, and again, I, I threw a picture up. That would be the, the shed. Mm -hmm. Not got. cheap. It's not a Home Looks Depot Looks like a little special. house. Yeah, I mean window boxes, everything. Mm. Uh, it just wouldn't look right if I just slammed it up against my garage. It's not going to look right. And to be honest, there's only one, and I met Marie out there, there's only one real level spot in my yard. Everything else seems to be a swale either coming out along the side of my house or going behind my house down through the development. Um, it would look nice there. I've talked to Trudy, my neighbor behind me. She hates it, but she's fine with it. <laughs> so, but she was promised a lot of goods from the builder. Um, and I, I don't know what he told her in the long run, but the first thing I asked the builder when I was looking to buy the house is could I put a shed in there? And he said, yes. And then I found out there's a 50 foot setback. So um, it's, it's a, it's a $5,000 shed. It's not cheap. It's really nice. It's pretty. It would look nice there. I'm just looking for a place to empty out my garage. The strange thing is I moved from Canandaigua. Everything that's taking up one space in my garage used to fit in my garage in Canandaigua. <laughs> but that's where builders cut now, and they just make them tiny. Um, and I can't get my truck in the garage, and so everything now is stuck in there. So I'm not looking to cheap out. I'm, I'm putting, you know, I'm proposing a very nice looking building that would fit nicely there. And you wouldn't see it from the road, I don't think. It, it's behind all the trees and the sign. And Trudy doesn't sit on her front porch. <laughs> so she's 85, I think now. Um, Did they explain to you why you needed a 50 foot setback? No, they didn't. I didn't think so. No. Um, <laughs> it, believe it or not, it, so. Trudy's driveway is actually the right of way of Baird Road. We own that right of way. It's it used to be a, a road. It's now probably just a driveway, if okay. anything. So as a result, because we own it, you're not, you, you are in a corner lot, in essence, and you need to have a 50-foot setback. And I had my, I don't, I'm not sure if you know Michael Milner, the builder. I've heard recently he's on his way. He's got cancer. He's dying. Oh. So, but I couldn't get him. I had a t quote for 1,200 bucks to seal the entire roadway. And I couldn't get a response. So I did the roadway in front of my property, and then I sealed the stamped concrete. But I don't know if there's anything above and beyond that that I own. I don't know who owns the road between the stamped concrete and Baird Road. Is that the town? It, it is owned by the town of Penfield, but it's not being utilized as a roadway anymore. It's probably just a driveway it's at this point in time. Basically. She comes in to get into her driveway, and I use it to get into mine. Who plows it, Jim, out of curiosity? I don't know. That's a good question. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's, totally uh, it's, irrelevant to the application. It's privately <laughs> plowed, Put it that although we do get a lot of uh, garbage trucks that come down and use that as a place to take their 
breaks. Yeah. Uh, waste management. Uh, I think it's Penfield and somebody else. There, there's okay. like three garbage. My wife works at home. She reports on all that. <laughs> so. All right. Do we have any questions from um, the board? Yeah. Um, that sign out front. About how tall is that sign that for the for the I all call it the development. Is that, a, is that a four foot, five foot tall, six foot tall? It's probably. With the landscaping it's and everything? It's a permanent structure. It's all, it's stone and brick. Right. With a foundation and then it's the gold leaf type thing. Mm -hmm. It's probably four feet tall. Right. So there's a structure already out there that's would in a sense be blocking the view already that's closer that, to the property line. And there's birch trees, pine trees incorporated in that. Right. So there's a lot of trees built into that around that sign. Right. And then the back side of your yard and the opposite side of the yard are actually much, they're probably about half the depth from what I can tell on the site map as well. The back I've got 30 feet. The other side slopes off so fast. That you really can't put anything can't on there without it. major I grading. I can't even mow it. Right. I have a hard time mowing it. It's right. so steep, yeah. So really this larger side really is the ideal spot. It's really the only spot it. I could put it. Okay. And it's, like I say, it's the only real level spot where there's not a drainage swale built in. Right. And the uh, the builder, they're out of uh, Albion. Uh, they're going to come in and they'll put in a stone pad okay. and build a stone pad for it. So it's not a permanent structure. And I don't think you guys require tie downs or anything. No. It's not a problem if you do. But with all the stuff I'm putting in it, it's not going anywhere. <laughs> so Excellent. Thank you. If I can. So Anything else from the board? Lights? Any exterior lighting? Not exterior. If I did, it might be just a motion light. Um, there is an electrical outlet on the back of the development sign, uh -huh. I, which I could tap into. It'd be like 15 feet away, and I might run electric from that over just from interior. And if I did anything on the exterior, it would be a motion light. But and that would probably face. I don't the, think I would. Driveway? Though. It wouldn't. It would face my house. It wouldn't face it, at an angle. It would come toward my house if I did that. But there's too many deer. I probably wouldn't bother. The deer around there would set that thing off all the time. So and you're going to leave the, the grass in place. You're not putting any kind of driveway to it, or no, yeah, no. Okay. That, Great. that was my question. Oh, anything else? Anyone in the audience? Yeah. Thank you, Joe. My cheering section. I am a nutcase, I know. <laughs> I'm a neat freak. But thank you. I, uh, I can't stay. My wife had surgery. I have to get well, home tonight. Good so luck. I appreciate good it. Good luck. All right. Thanks a lot. Welcome. Is he? <laughs> Item number three Michael Tubbs on behalf of Derizio Construction Inc. I'm sorry, of Derizio Construction Inc. on behalf of Lucas Ogden, 1175 Berry Road, Webster, New York, 14580. Request an area variance from Chapter 250 5.1 F1 of the code. Uh, to allow a deck to a residence with less front setback on a pre-existing non-conforming lot uh, than permitted at 1175 Bay, Bay Road. The property is owned by Lucas Ogden and is zoned R-1-20. SBL number 093.11-1-48. Application number 17Z-0059. Good evening. My name is Michael Tubbs. I'm with the Rizzio Construction Special Projects Coordinator. Uh, requesting for an area variance based on the hardship for 1175 Bay Road in Webster, 14580. A uh, customer has contracted us for a 16 by 12 deck, and uh, being that the home does not fall under or meet the current easement, we are hoping for our variance. Could you tell me why the deck? Um there aren't alternate locations for it? So the exterior portion of the home has a double door and the customer is trying to maximize the usage, come out the door onto the deck. All right. So that's, that would be a uh, desired uh, reason to have it there. But is there, are there any, uh, you mentioned in your written application about the current easement restricts where you could put it. And that's really what I was asking, are there? Um, you're talking so about the I setback think, requirements? Yeah, I think being okay. the house is out of compliance, right. there wouldn't really be a place on the home that wouldn't be in compliance. And the deck's not going to go any further to the line than the house already is? Correct. Okay. Anything else from the board? Um, do you, are you planning any lighting around the deck? 
I, I don't believe lighting on the deck, uh, an additional, we call it a coach light next to that door, uh, I believe is contracted. Okay, and um, there would be no fence around the deck or anything, like a Correct. rail? Uh, height does not require that, I believe, in code, so that was not contracted. Okay. Anything else from the board? Anyone in the audience? All right, thank you. And follow up phone calls are call relevant tomorrow. tomorrow. Like. Yep. All right, thank you for your time. Yep. <coughs> Item number four, Joseph Paris, 1947 Jackson Road, Penfield, New York, 14526, request an area variance from Chapter 255.1 F1 of the code to allow a deck with less front setback back on a corner lot than permitted at 1947 Jackson Road. The property is owned by Joseph Paris and is owned R-1-20, SPL number 124.15-1-73.2, application number 17Z-0058. Ron. Good evening. I've been in the property about a year, a little over a year, and I've done everything I could to clean it up. It, uh, it was owned by the original owner for 20 years, and I don't know if you remember Mike, but uh, he passed, and there wasn't much done to the property um, over his last years in life. And um, there was an existing paver patio, which is still there, and a decrepit fence. I took some pictures of it before I removed it. And part of the problem with that piece of property is there are several trees on it. There were about 32 when I bought it. I removed six, so there's probably about 26 left, and mostly pine. And the problem with pine trees is they're dirty trees. So I cannot walk out of my home barefoot, uh, you know, out the sliding glass doors, out of my living room, onto that paper patio, because it, it would just be senseless. If I can just get off the ground on a deck, a foot off the ground, um, it would be much easier to keep clean. I could go out, have a cup of coffee, barefoot, uh, my bathroom, I don't know. <laughs> I just want to be wow. able to, to have a deck and have an area where I could put a grill, um, you know, uh, and it's, it's the only natural spot on the property for a deck. And I do understand, I didn't understand when I started taking things apart that it needed to be, according to code, 25 feet from the property line. I do not have 25 feet based on that, the way that house is situated on that property. Um, so I'm asking um, to, in fact, put it in an area where there will only be 12 feet from my neighbor's property line. Um, who Jeff and Pam happen to be here tonight, surprising to me. Um, I've spoken with them and the other neighbor that surrounds my other property <coughs> side. No one has any issues with a deck being there. Um, it's going to not only enhance my property value, but theirs as well. Uh, I'm just cleaning things up and, and trying to, uh, to make the best of the only area I could possibly put a deck. On the other side of the property, I have septic. So, um, and that's off the master bedroom. That's There'd right. be no area to put a deck there um, either. What's it gonna be constructed out of? Um, just two by six decking wood material. I'm not looking to do anything elaborate. Uh, based on what I submitted, it doesn't require a rail. But I'm thinking that maybe I do want a rail around it. Um, but you know, I can take that up later. Right now, I just wanna know that I, I could do this. I'm out of time at this point. I wanted to have this project completed by now. I couldn't get into the last meeting, so. I'm not sure that I could actually even complete it this fall. Uh, so that would be a question of mine. If it does get approved, you know, when does it, is there a time? You have a year from the time you oh, get okay. your Okay, that would be great. And what's the total dimensions of it again? Um, 16 by 17. Okay. That's what I'm asking for. Currently what's there now is 12 by 17. I just, my sister had a bad experience with a grill too close to the house, and if I'm going to put a propane grill, I want it. Out. That's why I'm asking for the extra three feet. I mean, in fact, I could go uh, north and south, but again, that's going to put a grill closer to the home than I want it to be. So I'm just looking to go out three feet bigger than the patio. That patio's been there, I believe, since day one. Uh, the, the fence, I just pushed over. I mean, that's how rotted it was that surrounded that patio. And this is going to sit up about a foot above the ground? Correct. Mm -hmm. okay. There'll be one step down from the sliding glass doors onto the deck which will be a foot off the ground. Are you gonna have it on footers or? Oh yeah, Yeah. absolutely. Okay. Color, just? Stain, color natural stain. stain. Okay. It'll, it'll fit in nicely and thankfully I already have a fence around my entire yard, <laughs> which I love. Thanks. <laughs> it was there when I bought it, so I have to go through it. I gotta ask you this, I take it the bear went with Mike? Excuse me? The bear? It used to be in the Yeah, front. well, the bear was rotted, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, um, you know, the, the bear, I, I, I think Jan took what was left of the bear. Okay. So, yeah, and I miss Mike tremendously. Long time. Right. Anything else from the board? Just one, Dan. Okay. The, these two, uh, you have two letters oh, here that say mixture. that there's not a problem. They agree with it. Are these two people here tonight? Oh, okay. one of them is. I just wondered if there was two here and two more, for the record. Yeah. So. Um, there's there's two properties that touch my property. Yep. Jeff is one of them. Don is not here tonight. Oh, okay. But both, and I have the originals. I know it's a bad copy. I have the originals. Oh, no, that's all right. It. No, this is uh, great. But they both signed oh, off on I spoke with, uh, you know, same thing. I put a shed in, which you guys approved. I went to all the neighbors first because uh, I didn't want to get a predicament where I was upsetting somebody or whatnot. So just there's trying to do it the right already way. already a fence between, on your lot line, between the neighbors and the structure. Yeah, my, my fence covers the entire property line. Okay, anything else? Anyone in the audience? Okay? Yeah, yeah I want you to come up here. <laughs> Let us know if you need a stool to stand on. Right? <laughs> 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 yes. My name is Jeff Patrick. Oh, by the um, way, I'm going to hide behind you guys. <laughs> I, I am the direct neighbor behind Mr. Paris. Um, we have the luxury that the neighbors before him put up a beautiful vinyl white picket fence around the entire property and we have an extremely large pine tree that is direct line of sight between us and him. We can't even see the deck that he wants to put up unless we walk out in the yard and look around the monster pine tree. So this is not a concern to us. Uh, he's done nothing but incredible upgrades to the property since he moved in. Um, I actually had to walk out today and show my wife that he wanted to make the deck bigger. You can't, you can't even really tell. So we are 100% supportive of the new deck and we're the only neighbor that can possibly see it. The other neighbor that he made reference to, our garage, my boat, my jet ski block the complete line of sight from where their house sits to his new deck. So the, the other neighbor who is, they're fantastic people as well. I'm sure they don't have an issue. They don't have an issue about anything, but it doesn't really apply to them. They can't see it either. So um, we're, we're in complete support of it. Great. And you may get a hot dog out of it, right? When he brings his grill out. <laughs> possibly, possibly. I'm okay with that. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Thanks yeah, for coming. Yeah, absolutely. And appreciate that. Anyone else in the audience? Okay. All right, item number five, Gina Montanarella, 44 Hilltop Drive, Penfield, New York, 14526, requests an area variance from Chapter 250-5.1 F1 of the code to allow a concrete patio with less side setback than permitted at 44 Hilltop Drive. The property is owned by Gina Montanarella and is owned R115, SBL number 139.11-4-58, S uh, application number 17Z-0061. Thank you. I'm Gina, this is my daughter Lila. So we are here um, to talk about our patio at 44 Hilltop Drive. This actually started in July um, when my husband, after three years, convinced me to get a pool. And I very specifically said, I'm not vacuuming the pool, I'm not. Look, I'm sitting by it, and you can bring me a drink, that's all I'm doing. And yet here I am, because my husband's out of town um, on this day, so he's already in trouble. Um, so we, um, I have a couple of just points here, I know he sent in a whole probably six page letter, because he's a professor, so it was probably very long, so thank you for reading that. We also have four letters from our neighbors um, supporting our patio, they were all actually going to come, and I told them really, it's, it's okay, they all love it, so in case you were wondering, they all love our patio. Um, one of the first things is about inhibiting a full use of our property. Our old patio really did that. It um, had probably been at that house for 30 years. It was tiny. It's landlocked between our addition, the garage, um, and then our neighbor who is close to our house. Um, we couldn't really just fit our family and our patio furniture and anything on there. So it was inhibiting the use of our property. Um, it is unique to our property because of just, again, there was an addition that was already there when I moved in, um, and just that our homes are just naturally close to one another, as are the garages. Um, asking for the variance, actually, it would enhance 
um, our property and does not alter the essential character of the neighborhood. Our patio is awesome. It's gorgeous. Um, it really helps the neighborhood. It really helped to sell um, the house next door. One of our neighbors, Megan, who wrote a letter. I don't know if she put it in there, but she came over and looked at it before she bought the house and raved about it and loved it. Um, and it doesn't really impede her enjoyment either because she has a fence. Her garage is there, bushes. No, it's a flat patio. No one can really see it from from the street, anything like that. Um, my husband really wrote a lot of things here, and I'm really skimming. So, um, And then again, the hardship. We did not really create the hardship. Yes, we got a patio. We had it installed professionally. Um, we did not realize there was a permit, so sorry about that. That was our own fault. Um, but just the space was tiny. We needed a bigger space. And if we do have to take it out now, it would really make us sad and cost us a lot of money. Well, how old is the uh, patio? How old is it? Um, yeah. Three years old? Three years? Yeah. And that, in those three years, been any issues, complaints that oh, you God, know? Oh, God, no. Our, pa our neighbors come over and hang it's out. And, okay. Yeah. <laughs> party. Um, it's the party patio. Exactly. Yeah, don't say yeah. that. We're on camera. Don't say that. <laughs> any idea what it would cost to have taken out? Um, it was about 3000 to put in. Okay. Um, it's a beautiful stamped patio. Right. Um, I'm, I don't know if I have no idea. I mean, I guess we could get our own jackhammer and do it, but probably a thousand maybe by the okay. time they haul it away. And right, but a, there'd be some kind of substantial cost to yes. have it moved and taken away. And my tears, <coughs> right. my tears and sadness. Right. And then you said the neighbor's view to the side of you, it's, a, it's she, obstructed, can't so you see it, can't no, even see it. Because we have a giant bush, a Rosa Sharon tree, and then where her yard is, she has a fence, um, so she can't even see it. Excellent. All right, thank you. Anything else from the board? Just, just two questions. Number one, yes. how far? What is the variance you're asking for? You haven't really told us. Um, I think it has, to, well, it has to. Well, it has to be what? Ten feet from our neighbor. Right. We're asking for less than ten feet. We know that. That's why you're here. But do you know what it is? Um, it goes. It's probably um, like three feet. I think to that two. I'm the, trying to get it on the record, but fence. I think it was two I, feet. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah. I think it's an eight-foot variance. Right? Yeah. The application. Yes. Yeah, because it's two I foot from the edge. I just texted my husband in Dallas. I'm like, what's the what's the variance? Because he didn't tell me that part. My other question was yes. the prior patio that was there. Yeah. How close was that to the property line? Was that closer or not as close? Oh, it was not as close. It was much smaller, and so it was closer to our house. Okay. Yes, and it was just too tiny. It was like four slabs of concrete, and it was nasty. Right. You mean for those wild parties you throw? We need, you know what, we needed to look good for the, the, the neighbors, yes. We like to set an example. Our house is now sided. People rave about our house. <laughs> Sorry, I'll stop talking. I love the well, so. there. Anything else? Uh, no. Anyone from the audience? Great, thank you. Item number six, Dana Brown, 1724 Kennedy Road, Webster, New York, 14580. Request an area variance from Chapter 250-5.1 F7 and Chapter 250-713C of the code to allow a lean-to addition to a pre-existing non-conforming barn to shelter livestock with less side setback than permitted at 1724 Kennedy Road. Property is owned by Dana Brown and is zoned RA2. SBL number 111.01-1-8.1, application number 17Z-0062. Good evening. Good evening. Dana Brown, 1724 Kennedy Road. Um, we have a, a barn, right? So this is our property. This is also our property adjacent, 1748 Kennedy Road. Um, so we have this barn right here, which um, we have our horses in there. And... Uh, <clears throat> Years ago when we were living on this property, we purchased a five acre piece, this little sliver right here, from Andrea Doherty, who, who owned this property at that time. And that was uh, long before we even considered that we might be purchasing this property. <laughs> we were still living down here, didn't realize our business would grow to the point where we wouldn't have room to live and we would need someplace else. So we, when we purchased this, this, this section here, we wanted to uh, maximize what we were able to get, so we set this property line exactly 100 feet off the barn, which is what's required by code for that to be operated and used as a barn. Um, so now <coughs> we've moved into this property, and uh, we're using this barn for our horses, and we really would like to have a, 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 covered, a covered area covered area on the back there to help keep the weather from blowing in and give them some shelter so that they don't have to necessarily be in the barn, they can be standing outside, but still have shelter from the sun and the rain, snow, whatever. Uh, but when we do that, uh, now we're 90 feet from this line instead of 100 feet because that roof becomes part of the barn. Um, so I guess my biggest point is that we have uh, we have fences and everything in here now, 
and the horses can be out in that paddock. The horses can actually go right up to the property line and stand there. So what's the difference between them standing there and standing underneath the shed roof? They're still standing there. They're not living underneath the shed roof. There's no stalls proposed there or anything. Um, uh, we have all the stalls we need inside the barn, so they'd be housed in the barn outside of the 100 foot. Uh, also, the fact that I own this property as well, so I'm not going to complain to myself. <laughs> um, now, I know obviously if something were to sell, if sell one of these in the, in the future, then that could be an issue, but uh, it kind of comes back to the fact that uh, the, there's no difference really in, in where the horses are going to be. If they're going to be living in the barn and just walking around out there. Okay. Okay. Um, thanks for coming tonight. Um, you did talk about why you needed a lean-to. Can you talk about the design of it, what it's made out of, what it, what it will look like? Sure. Um, well, we can just do a quick, I think there's a sketch in my, in my package there. But uh, this is the, you're standing on the road, and this is the face of the, the, face of the barn. Uh, it's just going to be a metal roof, uh, four by four posts, um, and that's pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> is it going to be left metal, or will it be painted? <laughs> Mm -hmm. Will it be painted, or is it going to be left? No, metal? the posts will just be just be natural. Okay. Yeah, and then the roof color is probably going to be black or gray, mm -hmm. uh, probably black. <clears throat> just try to match the, the roof of the existing barn. And any lighting out there? No. Okay. Um, how? You know, you talked about the property line. Um, had you considered moving the property line? I did. Uh, thank you for reminding me about that. I did look into that. I thought that would be the most expeditious way to make this happen, uh, but it turns out to move a property line even a few feet, uh, the surveyor has to come out and he's got to do all his shots. It's got to get filed a couple different places. Uh, I basically have to purchase the property from myself and resell it to, you know, to, so it ends up being almost $1,000 to, um, to move that property line over 10 feet. Okay, so seemed, it's pretty cost prohibitive. It, it just seemed a little ridiculous to spend that much money for a, a line in the grass. Uh -huh. And this is for your personal use for the horses, right? Yes. Okay. Yes, we don't have any... Um, uh, we don't have any business, anything going on there. It's just personal horses. Okay. Um, I think that was all the questions I had. Anybody else? Adding this lean-to won't increase capacity for horses in the barn, will it? No. Okay. Anyone nope. in the audience? <laughs> okay. Thank Thanks. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. That was the last application, so the public hearings will be adjourned. We'll take a... Uh, Four minutes, Goose? Uh, three. Three minute <laughs> break. And then, uh, oh, you dropped something there. Yeah. Dropped a card or something. Oh, and then reconvene it back. Thank you all very much. To uh, reconvene. Um, <coughs> number, one. Yep. number one, Mike. I'm going to make a motion to, well, first of all, I made a motion that this is a type two for Seeker. Second. Uh, no further uh, action required. Okay, on the seeker motion, all those, uh, we have a motion type two and a second for that. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, okay. Um, I'm going to move that we uh, grant uh, the variance for a four foot fence to be uh, two more feet inside the, uh, the right of way. I think it's an 18 foot variance, we decided. Right. Okay. Um, I don't think the four foot is going to make that much of a difference in this particular location as opposed to three feet. Um, I think, you know, the neighbor expressed some concern, seemed to indicate that two feet would, would make a difference to him, and they're, they're agreeable to that, for, so that's the basis. I don't think it's going to change the character of the neighborhood at all. I'll second it. Any uh, further discussion no, it, it, on it this? Just that, would you go out and help them make sure where it is? I mean, you know, because it's... Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, they, they've done a pretty good job of staking out the area. I think they know where it is, but still, yes, well, yeah, they've so got to go out 19 and a half feet off the edge of the gutter. Right. That's what they need to do, so. Okay. All right. Okay. Good luck. Any, well, let's well, go. Uh, <laughs> 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 Who's that? Who's that? Who's that? I did. Oh, you did? I did. Yeah. I did. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we have a, a motion to approve with the condition of the moving at two feet in as well. Um, and we have a second on that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Good luck. Thank you. It's two feet in from the property line. Right. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yep. Okay. That's why I got a little. I figured it's a real way. Coming here not home at all. Yeah. <laughs> Call. <laughs> oh, Call. Number two.
Number two, let's see, this is a type two, so under secret, there's no further review. Second. Oh, and I apologize to you guys, because usually we go, whoever's here, and we take them, so oh, that's okay. we'll move along. That's all right. Oh. So we have a type two, uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And the, let's see, this is the 20-foot uh, variance for the shed. Um, I'm going to make a motion to approve his uh, request. Uh, it really is one of the only spots in the yard. Uh, the other, the opposite side of the house is extremely steep. Um, the backyard is limited in the depth of it. Um, and this side being 60 some feet and with the monument signed out front and the property that's actually closer to the road, uh, I don't think it's going to be any um, hindrance with the view blocked from the road as well. I'll second it. Pay also, for it. Oh. also think there's a significant buffer in there. Yes. Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah, there's, it's difficult to see. Okay, motion to approve and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, let's skip to number five. Hey, I'm back up again. Yeah. Uh, let's see. <laughs> uh, once again, type two action under seeker. No further review. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And uh, we will do a motion to a, or a grant this variance, an uh, eight foot variance uh, for this paver patio. Um, it's been there for some time now there's been no there's been no complaints no issues um they need it for the parties and they need it for the parties you're all invited and the, uh, <laughs> and the uh neighbors have written uh letters and support as well second okay we have a motion to approve and a second any further discussion all those in favor aye, aye. aye. number six um i'd like to make a motion that this is a type two action requiring no further action. Review. 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 No further review. Okay, <laughs> we have a second on that? Yes, second. second. All right, uh, all in favor. Aye. 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 Um, I'm going to make a motion to approve this. Um, the lean-to is needed for the um, safety of the animals. Um, given the fact that the current owner also owns the adjacent property, uh, it would it's not going to affect the neighbors. Um, also, he tried to move the lot line, but it was cost prohibitive. So um, my only concern is I know that you've expressed that um, you'd be willing to just have this lean to end if either property was sold. I mean, I don't worry about it. That's this area. OK, so we're OK with it without a restriction. Yeah, it, it, it's that. such a minimal intrusion. Um, yeah. But I, I mean, I hear you. He did say that, but I okay. Okay, then for those reasons, I would make a motion to approve. Second. Any further discussion? Well, I mean, it's almost close to an awning. <laughs> well, yeah, well, yeah, it really is. It's, 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 so, it's I mean, very it's minimal. Drew, it's, about as, yeah, it's about as minimal as you can Yeah, imagine. and yeah. certainly no adverse impact to the character. No. no. So we had a motion to approve in a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, good luck. Let's go to number three. Uh, I am going to make a motion that this is a type 2 action under seeker. Second. Further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, now I'm going to make a motion to approve as well. Um, decks like that are pretty standard in neighborhoods now. The deck's not going to be any closer to the line than the house is. Um, so, given that, I think it's an appropriate variance to grant. Second. Okay, we have motion to approve in a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Number four. I'm going to move that uh, this is a type two action under seeker requiring no further action. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> I'm also going to make a motion to approve this. Um, it's minimal uh, in that the height's going to be a foot above ground level. The neighbors testified, the only one that can see it, uh, not going to be a problem. And uh, I think given the, 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 the narrow uh, nature of the backyard and the fact that two neighbors that are directly affected have no problem with it, uh, means that we should approve. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, I think that's all the applications tonight. Very uh, efficient, as always. So any further business? No. Nope. All right, we'll stand adjourned. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
See, now are you gonna go home? And